Hello, my name is Kajuju Kyogora, the founder and MD of Healthy Kajuju. Have you tried our amazing products? We are a food manufacturer transforming how we consume wholesome foods deliciously. And this is our story. This all began um, in my university dorm <laughs> and I had decided I wanted to eat better and live better just to improve my health and that meant that I had to just rethink everything that I was putting into my body. I cut out a lot of things from my diet um, including dairy, um, I found out I was lactose intolerant Eventually, I cut out meat as well. I stopped taking a lot of processed foods. So as much as I was cutting out, it also meant that I wanted to include a lot of more wholesome foods into my diet and really enjoy it and have delicious meals. I didn't want it to feel like um, I was depriving myself. In 2016, I was just experimenting a lot with these foods and there happened to be uh, local markets that had just started picking up in Nairobi and I thought why not share what I had been trying out with other people and see what they thought about it and that's how I started just baking and mixing and blending in my mom's kitchen. Kajuju came from my experience of wanting to eat better and live better and of course it became more challenging to find foods that I enjoyed to eat like in the supermarkets and so I really wanted to make it easier for other people to be able to access products that are great for them, great for their bodies and that they enjoy and that's how we started making all these products. One day I just uh, packed uh, samples of our products in, <laughs> in my car and kind of drove around Nairobi just um, walking into gyms, um, talking to the people I met there, telling them about my story, what I was doing, why I thought the products were great for their clients. Um, a lot of them said no. <laughs> a lot of them. And actually at the very end of the day, at the last one that I went to is when they actually welcomed me and it wasn't even like wow yeah we're going to stock your products and what it was like yeah okay let's try out we'll give you some space let's see how people respond and just them taking a chance on me someone who they had never heard about products they hadn't come across before that's what yeah set the ball rolling for us luckily the reception in the market has been great we've created a community which is so, so important. Having a community of people who understand the story and what um, the brand is about, um, that has just been fantastic for us. At the moment, we have a range of 42 uh, products. Um, well, these include the products and the range of flavors. Um, and it's still growing. We have a lot more products still in the pipeline. And you might wonder why 42 products? They serve different categories. So we have some in the breakfast cereals, we have some in snacks, and then we have the frozen um, foods, which are the burgers. And they all serve the same purpose, which is to make um, eating well and eating better more accessible for everyone. And as much as they are very different, they are also very similar. A lot of them use the same ingredients, like the breakfast cereals, um, mostly the main ingredient is the oats, uh, which you find in the snack bars as well, and the energy bites, even the crackers have oat flour. Um, in the energy bites, the main ingredients, um, one of the main ingredients is the dates, 
which you also find in the snack bars as well. So they're quite linked, the processes that are used to make them are also linked as well. Um, so at the end of the day, they're very similar and they serve the same purpose. When sourcing our raw ingredients, we source them both locally and import some of them. Um, in future, what we do hope for is that there'll be a stronger link between us as the manufacturer and the producers of these raw materials um, so that we can support even more of these producers. And especially with our latest product, which is the frozen burgers and the falafel, which we use, um, which are made with fresh um, raw ingredients, um, like you have parsley and you have onions and the like. So for those who are able to work with local um, producers and even with directly with farmers, which has just been fantastic. From my experience, we've had, I mean, a lot of achievements, but there are also um, a fair share of challenges. And running a business is a challenge in itself. Um, it takes a lot of time. You know, you talk about having to invest 10,000 um, hours just to become great at what you're doing. So I think one of the biggest challenges is just the learning curve that's involved in it. As much as I studied um, law and business management and I worked in bakeries and restaurants, running a business such as this in the food sector practically is very different. Also in terms of kind of bootstrapping a business and wanting it to grow organically and gradually I remember at the very beginning, I thought it would be quick results, <laughs> quick growth. Um, I had these big plans, wanting to buy this big machinery, this complex <laughs> machinery that would do all these things so well. And I really had to go back to the drawing board and also just change my attitude. And I started to appreciate a gradual um, growth uh, very organic which is challenging because it takes more time um, when when you're doing it in that way when you don't have access to you know a lot of funding to buy all the equipment that you need so that's also a challenge in itself and also that period of that gradual growth has helped us to prepare for the point we are at now. Because sometimes very, very quick growth can actually kill your business. So that gradual organic growth has just helped us to prepare us for the growth that we are now experiencing and to be ready for it. Um, to have already worked on our production processes, on, um, on all these different aspects that the business needs. For someone who's thinking of getting into the agri-processing space, First of all, I'd say congrats and welcome, Karibu Sana. There's just so much that we can do. Um, I would advise them to just simply start and trust the process. Um, I remember when I started, it was, as much as I was very, very excited, um, it was also daunting. I remember I spent quite a lot of time thinking about, you know, coming up with a business plan, um, trying to figure out every single thing <laughs> that, I needed, that I needed to do, that um, where I would source everything and all that. But I was actually forced to start. And I think that was so helpful. Um, you just start and you learn along the way. A lot of the things you won't be able to figure out right at the beginning. It's only with time and with actually being on the ground that you learn along the way. There's just so, so much more that we are planning to do. Um, there are a lot of products that we're working on at the moment and we want to reach more of the market. Um, there's still a lot more people who we want to be able to share these great products with, make it easier for them to eat better, even for kids, you know, to be able to, to have a healthy, delicious snack that they can carry to school. 
So reach more of the market, um, reach more of the region as well. Um, go beyond our borders and just share these amazing products. So that was my story as an agripreneur. I absolutely love what I do. There's so much to learn and share with each other. I would love to know what you do as an entrepreneur, as an agripreneur, what's your experience? Share your story.